So we are looking at the next exercise, which is exercise 5D. And what exercise 5D looks at is the intersections of two lines. And so what I've got here is a diagram, and the diagram shows two lines with these equations. The equations are y equals 3x and x plus 2y equals 4, which intersect at the point P. And the first thing that we would want to do is to find out where these two things intersect each other. Do you know um, how to find out from GCSE? Do you know how you find out where two lines intersect each other if you have their equations? Yeah, you're going to do simultaneous equations. You're going to do simultaneous equations for these two lines that we've got here. And we're just going to try and think about why that is true. So at this particular point here, at this particular coordinate, both lines have the same x and y coordinate, which means that x and y for both of these equations must be true at the same time. And if they're true at the same time, that's what simultaneous equations are. It's where you're trying to solve something at the same time. And obviously, you know the word simultaneous means at the same time. So to find the intersection of two lines, you solve the equations simultaneously. And as I was just saying, in your other lesson, you will look at simultaneous equations in more detail. So if you find some of the stuff today quite tricky for the first half of the lesson when we look at this, don't worry, because you will be able to recap some of these simultaneous equation skills in some of the other lessons. So we're going to try and solve the equation y equals 3x and the equation x plus 2y equals 4. When you get the new calculators, which we're going to be placing an order for in the next week or so, you will be able to solve these equations really quickly just on a calculator. You won't need to do the long process of, of solving. But today we don't have those calculators. So we're going to think about how we might solve these. Now, there's a couple of different ways of solving simultaneous equations. Can anybody remember the names of the two main ways that we would solve simultaneous equations? There's two ways, yeah. Pardon? Substitution is one of the methods where you would make y or x the subject in one of the equations and you would substitute it into the other one. That's one of the methods that you will have learned at GCSE for simultaneous equations. There was another method Elimination. Elimination was more for equations that might look like this, where you'd have 2x plus 3y equals 5 and 4x minus y equals 11. What would you do if it was these kind of equations? What would you need to do to do the elimination method? Yeah, you'd, you'd need to times maybe the top one by 2 to get 4x here and here, or maybe the bottom one by 3. So this is called elimination. But I don't think that elimination is going to be the best method for this one. I think substitution is going to be better because I already have y equals as one of the equations. So I can take what y is equal to, and I can substitute it in where y is like this. So when I substitute y equals 3x in here, I would have x plus 2 multiplied by y, which is 2 multiplied by 3x, which is equal to 4. So I get x plus 6x, which is 7x, is equal to 4 which says that x is equal to 4 over 7, or 4 sevenths, OK? Now, that's not quite the end of it, because it wants us to say the coordinates of p. It didn't ask for just the x coordinate. It asked for the coordinates, which means I also need to find out what y is equal to. How do I find out what y is equal to? Substitute into? Here, I can substitute it into y equals 3x. So y is the x coordinate multiplied by 3. So y is going to be this multiplied by 3. 4 over 7 times 3? 12 over 7. So the coordinates of p, I would finish by writing that p is 4 over 7, 12 over 7, like this. OK, so some simple. Yeah, so the last step that I had here, to find out what y is equal to, my instruction of how to find out y is you take the x coordinate and you multiply it by 3. That's what this, because oh, okay. I'm solving the equation. So once I know what the x coordinate is, which is 4 sevenths, I can multiply it by 3 to get the y coordinate. So I know that p is 4 sevenths, 12 sevenths. And if I wanted to, I could say on my diagram that the x coordinate is 4 sevenths and the y coordinate is 12 sevenths. I could even write next to here 
that the p coordinate is 4 sevenths, 12 sevenths. And you'll notice I'm only doing fractions. It would be crazy to put that in decimals because it would look horrible. And fractions are just a lot easier for us to use here. So part b of the question says that the line x plus 2y equals 4 intersects the x-axis at the point q. Determine the coordinates of q. So if it's going to be intersecting with the x-axis, what do you think that means? If it's intersecting the x-axis, what do we know? Yeah, Abdi. We know that y is equal to 0. We're actually talking about this bit over here. Clearly, the y-coordinate of this is 0 because it's not going up or down at all. So we're just going to say that y is equal to 0, and we have this equation here, x plus 2y equals 4. So what's x equal to? 4, because y is 0. So x is going to be equal to 4. So that must mean that the coordinates, q, are 4 for x and 0 for y. So I could put that on here. That's 4, 0. And I could even just say the x coordinate is 4. Now, there are things that we're going to do in a future exercise that um, I could talk about now, actually. I might ask a question like this. Find the area of triangle OPQ. How do you think we might find the triangle area OPQ? How do you find the area of a triangle? Let's just remind ourselves. Half base times height. OK, so for this triangle OPQ, which is this triangle we've got here, what's the base of this triangle? Four. four. The base of this triangle is how far it is from O to Q, which is four. So it would be a half times four. And what's the height of this triangle? Twelve over, seven. 12 over seven. It goes 12 over seven up. So we would have a half times four times 12 over seven. A half times four is two. And two times 12 over seven is? 24 over 7. 24 over 7 units squared. We don't actually have to find the area here. It's going to be in a future exercise. But I just thought it's worth us thinking about this now so that the next time you see it will be the second time you've seen it rather than the first time that you've seen it. OK? So that's why we often try and find out where does it cross the axis, because we might try and work out other properties. Does anyone have any questions about this bit before we go on to the next slide? So simultaneous equations and then thinking about all the different properties of how the graph might work. They, they wouldn't give you a measurement because it, the, the axes are just in units, whatever it wants to be. So I write units squared because if it was centimeters, it could be centimeters squared. And if you didn't write that, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be penalized for it. You could just say that the area is 24 over 7. Good question. So we're going to have a look um, at a slightly different kind of question. You're going to do part A for me because it's related to the homework. And then we're going to do part B. We'll do together in just a second. OK, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to do part A. So you've got an equation of a line which goes through two points. And you need to find the equation of the line in what kind of form is this called? In the standard form. It's not quadratic. In the standard form. We need to find it in the standard form. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to work out the equation of the line there. No, the AC is not on. So you got the gradient was 9 over 12. Yep, good. I'm just going to simplify it all and make it look in that form, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, if you've done the first part, you can start thinking about in the second part as well. So you're going to have to keep going so that it looks like it's in this form. Yeah, you know what you need to do next. Use a calculator. If you can do, yeah. We're about to go through part A together now anyway. Okay, let's see what's happened with part A of the question. What's the first thing we need to do if we're going to try and find the equation of the line? What do I need to do first? Find the gradient. So the gradient is going to be the change in y, which is 12 minus 3, divided by the change in x, which is 11 minus minus 1. In other words, it's 11 plus 1 which is 9 over 12. Now, I would simplify 9 over 12 and leave it as 3 quarters. Who thinks they can tell me what the equation is going to be now for this line? Um, so it's um, 12 minus 3. So it's y minus y1 equals m brackets x. Like Good. So it's y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Which coordinates did people use, this one or this one? I probably would use this one just because the numbers are smaller, but it doesn't really matter. So I would say it's y minus 3 equals 3 quarters x plus 1. You'll come up with the same equation either way. From your homework, what did you find was the best way of then trying to get this into standard form now? What's the best thing to do first? Multiply it all by 4. So if I multiply everything by 4, I get 4y minus 12 equals 3 brackets x plus 1. It would just be bigger numbers and just take a bit longer. You'd, at the end, you'd probably be able to divide it. It would still work. So I get 3x plus 3. So then putting that all onto one side, I'm probably going to keep it on this side where the x bit is positive. I have 3x minus 4y plus 15 for the equation of the line. Did anybody get this, but they used this coordinate? Did anyone use the 11, 12 coordinate? OK, did you come up with this? If you divide it by 3, yeah. So the reason you've got yours um, all multiplied by 3 is because if you didn't simplify this fraction, your numbers that you were using were three times bigger. So at the end, you're going to need to divide it by 3 to simplify it that bit further, OK? So the next part says that the line L2 has the equation 3y plus 4x minus 30 equals 0. And we're going to try and find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So the point of intersection is going to mean that we're going to do simultaneous equations here. So the simultaneous equations that we're going to try and work with are 3y plus 4x minus 30 equals 0. And this one, um, well, they've got it written in a slightly different order. So I might write it in their order, minus 4y plus 3x plus 15 equals 0. What method do you think is going to be better to do, substitution or elimination? I think elimination is probably going to be the better method to solve these equations that we have. Um, when you do get the calculators, I wouldn't do this. I would just use the calculator if I was in like a, a few weeks' time when we've got the calculators, and I'll show you how you do that. So what do you think we should do to the top equation? What should we multiply the top equation by? And the, we're going to think about what we're going to multiply them by to do some kind of elimination here. It doesn't matter if the integer's on the other side. You could put the integers onto the other side, but it won't affect anything to do with the answer. Top one by four. Top one by four. 
bottom one by three. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite them over here. So if I times the top one by four, I get 12y plus 16x minus 120 equals zero. And if I do the bottom one, I get minus 12y plus 9x plus 45 equals zero. And then what should I do with these equations, do we think? I'm going to add them, because if I do 12 add negative 12y, they will cancel. So I'm going to add these equations together. So I get 25x, because 16 plus 9 is 25. And then I've got 120 minus 40, uh, sorry, 45 minus 120, which is going to be uh, 75. So that's negative 75, sorry, equals 0. So that means that 25x is 75. And so what's x equal to? 3. So the x coordinate is 3. And now I'm going to go back to one of these equations here and solve it. I'm probably going to do it in that top one that we've got there. So I'm going to sub into 3y plus 4x minus 30 equals 0. So 3y plus 4x. x is now 3. So it'll be plus 12 minus 30 equals 0. So 3y is equal to 30 minus 12, which is 18. Divide by 3, and y is equal to 6. So the coordinate of the intersection is 3, 6. You could substitute the x into this one or this one. The reason I actually selected to do it in the first one, Ikram, is because y here was negative, and it's just a little bit more of a faff to deal with it being negative. Now, I know I've said this twice. I'm going to say it a third time. You will have, with the new calculators, there is a function in it that will solve simultaneous equations for you. Unless the question says, show algebra, I'm telling you now, you should use the simultaneous equation solver, because it will save you lots of time. Look at the amount of time that took to be able to answer the question. All you would need to have done is type these equations in and pressed equals, and it would immediately come up with the answer 3, 6. So in the future, when you do have these calculators, they're called the class whiz calculators, you should not be spending time solving these simultaneous equations by hand, unless it says show using algebra. OK? So I'm going to pick some questions for us to do from exercise 5D, but we're not going to do all of it because it's quite a, quite a long exercise that's quite repetitive. So I'll pick a couple of those questions right now.